fiber friends, it's Alyssa from Eden's Angora and I wanted to take a little bit of time tonight to show off all of our new baby bunny litters that are now available and while you guys watch some cute fuzzy baby bunnies, which is why you probably clicked on this video, I wanted to go over some frequently asked questions that I get all the time about Angora rabbits. There are a lot of basic rabbit care videos out there that I would really recommend, such as Len and the Bunny, a fantastic YouTube channel. Um, however, this video is going to mostly focus in on Angoras. Keep in mind, as I put out my baby bunny bait, <laughs> that most of these answers I'm going to give you are my personal experience. That does not mean I'm the be-all, end-all of Angora rabbit knowledge. Um, there are a lot of great breeders out there that might do things differently, but this has been my experience and what works well for me. So there's a little disclaimer there. Uh, vary your sources for best results. Okay, so now that we have our baby bunny food out, I have some carrots so that I can help um, socialize them, get them used to human contact in a non-threatening way. And I have my list of frequently asked questions right here um, to discuss with you guys. Let's go get some baby bunnies. Baby bunnies, check. Yes, I have 14 beautiful French Angora babies hopping around the woolery with me. All right, let's get into these questions. The first one um, that I wanna answer is, do Angora rabbits make good pets? Now, to this I would have to say yes and no um, for the following reasons. Angora rabbits were bred to be handleable very gentle and very mild for hundreds upon hundreds of years. I don't want to exaggerate, but I think it may be thousands. Um, this is because they're supposed to sit on your lap and be able to be thoroughly brushed out regularly. So yes, they make fantastic, very gentle pets. However, these aren't just your average fuzzy bunnies. Their wool does take a, quite a lot of maintenance and sorry, I can barely take this seriously looking at the video with, anyway, this is wonderful. Um, they do require a, quite a lot of extra care. You definitely have to handle them regularly, check them over several times a week so that no mats form because once they form, their wool is so fine, it just takes a lot of effort to get through. All right, second question, what do you feed an Angora rabbit? So you may be familiar with traditional rabbits, um, regular rabbits. You wanna feed them pellets, but mostly a mix of Timothy and or orchard grass hay. And the basics may be true for Angora rabbits too. You don't wanna give them a lot of sugar. Um, high fiber diet, is extremely important to prevent wool block, but they also need quite a lot of protein. That is because it takes a lot of energy for the rabbit to produce all of this wool. Not only do they have to maintain their body condition, but they're working really hard growing all this wool. So you want an 18% protein pellet if possible. We also supplement with Mana Pro Calf Mana um, just a little bit. I'm telling you, don't overdo it on that. That's 25% protein, but it does give our nursing moms an extra boost and the babies do utilize the extra protein while they're growing. Somebody is deciding to chew on my yarn. Okay, he stopped. <laughs> that is not good. Um, I also like to give them alfalfa. That's very good for them as well. And I supplement with sunflower seeds and herbs almost daily. My rabbits also eat a lot of marigolds and comfrey, which I grow for them in their little rabbit garden when it is the season for that. 
So I think that covers the basics of feed. Um, how much brushing do they really require? That's another great question. And it depends on the Angora breed, the specific breed. So what I have here are French Angoras. They're pretty low maintenance. They require brushing out once to twice a week, um, unless you have a blower. If you are serious about Angoras and you get into blowing them out, um, it's less frequent grooming. You just blow them out once a week, maybe twice a week, and then you can largely skip brushing. Um, a lot of people will comb them out simply because it's therapeutic, and I'm included in that group, so I bring them inside and groom them just for bonding time as well. When they are juniors, which means they're below six months old, their junior coat is very, very fine, and it does require more brushing as a result. If you're talking about German Angoras, I've heard that they don't require brushing if you blow them out, but I haven't found that to be the case. I like to go over them at least once a week, and I feel like that's a good standard. If you're talking about English Angoras, I, in my experience, I could not go two days without brushing them and um, expect there not to be any mats. French Angoras are very mat resistant because they have more guard hairs in their wool, which also makes their wool a lot more color pigmented than an English or a German Angora, also more resistant to mats than the English. Um, so I think that covers that. How do I bond with my Angora? And I think the best way is just like this. Rabbits are prey animals and they're very easily intimidated. So allowing them to hop around you without direct interaction unless they choose it is a great starting point. However, you also are going to need to handle this rabbit quite a bit as an adult so there is some training that you definitely want to make sure you take care of too. And that is going to be one of our next questions we talk about, which is how do I get my rabbit to like grooming and how do I train my rabbit to be groomed? I think little and often seems to work best for them mentally. The next time one comes up to me, I will show you. Um, just some basic handling that I do with them. They're finding the nooks and crannies of the room at this point. I do have it bunny proofed, so not to worry. And I was hoping they would all stay in this central point because of the food, but they're feeling very full of themselves tonight. So, now that I have a victim, <laughs> You're gonna gently pick them up, supporting their back and below their hind feet always. And I'll just sit them on my lap here, gently pressing, er, yeah, pressing. Gently petting him, letting him know it's okay to be handled by me. Then I'm going to cradle him, flip him back, again, supporting his back the whole time and try to keep him on his back while I just examine the bottoms of his feet, make sure he's nice and clean. And then I'll flip him right side up and pet him again before just letting him go his own way. And that's all there is to it. Now I could have a comb in my hand and many times I do, and I just comb them out a little bit and then put them down. The key is to be really regular with it and you'll be successful. They also will go through a teenage phase um, at a few months old, probably three to four months old. You're going to get a, a little bit of a rebel stage going on um, as a teenager. So don't get discouraged if you do see some um, rebellious tendencies at that stage. Don't think that you did a bad job with training your rabbit. That's not the case, and most often they'll grow out of it. So now, what is appropriate housing for an Angora? Hmm, this is another complicated issue and there are a lot of opinions on it. People like to keep their Angora 
really clean because obviously you're you're working with the wool. It makes your job ten times easier if they're cleaner. Um, however, there is an animal beneath that wool that needs to be exercised, needs to have a life. So I have pretty strict personal standards when it comes to cage requirements. I do think that they need to be mostly on wire um, to keep them clean and mat free. If they're sitting on their poop and compacted, that, that poop is against their wool, that is not healthy in the least. They can get coccidia from that and other parasites, but also it compacts the wool, um, keeps it wet, and it will felt together forming mats quite easily. So it's good, a good idea to go with a wire cage, as much wire as possible, as little wood as you can get away with. However, you do also have to keep in mind that Angora rabbits can't really get wet due to the felting nature of their fiber. So they do need a good shelter and wind protection. The most economical way to do that may be adding a wooden section to their hutch. And that is okay as long as you spray it regularly with something like vinegar um, and clean, keep it clean, as clean as you possibly can. As for size of their cages, mine run around in pastures whenever the weather allows. We have large, um, safe enclosures outdoors. The moms that have litters have an eight foot long by 30 inch wide hutch that is mostly all wire. Our bucks, most of them are in, I think it's 30 inch by three and a half foot. I would like it to be at least four foot, ideally. However, we're still working on our ideals here. Um, I think that's it, all I have right off the top of my head as far as housing goes. We just, we let them run around quite frequently and I do think that's important, whether they're indoors or outdoors. I keep mine outdoors and then bring them inside for playtime. It's the least amount of mess and bother and the most amount of enjoyment for me, especially because we use all of their droppings in the garden, so it makes sense for us to have them near the garden. All right, can I sell the wool for profit? Most people that get into Angoras um, want to sell, <laughs> it's okay, want to sell the wool for profit and they feel like Angoras are a big money making operation. There are ways of making money with Angoras, absolutely. However, selling the wool for profit, I don't think is the best way and I'll just tell you why right now. Let's take, for instance, a typical French Angora, and I'm just gonna use a roundabout figure of getting three ounces of prime sellable wool from your rabbit each molt. They go through a molt about every three months. So that would be three ounces every three months. What I commonly see the fiber going for online is about seven to $12. Um, per ounce. So let's say you're going to strike the median and sell your wool for $10 an ounce. $10 an ounce times three ounces is $30. Divided by three months, since they only molt every three months, and you're going to get about making $10 a month off of your French Angora. That's not so bad. You can pay for their feed that way, or almost pay for their feed, depending on what route you go. Our rabbits cost us at least $10 a piece to keep. Um, that means by the time these babies are two months old, they've cost us around $20 a piece just to raise in food. So is it a truly you know, profit rich, uh, investment? No, not if you're selling the wool for profit. However, if I take those same three ounces of fiber and I spin them into yarn, um, you can charge about $25 an ounce for 100% Angora yarn. So that would turn that 
$30 into $75. That's a lot better. However, it takes, I'm going to say, an average of five hours to spend that much. Probably closer to eight um, hours to spend, to spend that much. So it's a significant time investment. Um, you can up that even further by taking your yarn and selling it as a finished product, like a scarf or a hat. Angora is four times softer than cashmere and seven times warmer than sheep's wool, if I'm getting that figure exactly right. That's what I've heard and believe, and I am absolutely thrilled with it to work with it as a fiber. It's, there's nothing more enjoyable to me than doing that. So I'm happy to do it because it's a passion, but if it's not a passion, you're, you're not going to make money doing it. It's definitely not a cash crop, especially not when your baby bunnies are eating your yarn <laughs> that you just spent a long time, many hours spinning. Okay, now selling Angora rabbits kits. Can you make money doing that? You can definitely make more money if you combine selling wool and selling kits. And now I'm getting less into the pet side of things, more into um, if you're interested in breeding Angoras. And I can say from experience that selling each Angora rabbit is very difficult. Um, it takes hours and hours and hours of education and communication with buyers on average. So again, maybe I sell a kit for $100. It has cost me at least $20 to raise. So you're looking at $80. But you have to take into consideration all of the hours of communication. Um, as a job, it's very tough. And ethically, I don't feel like I can just say, okay, you want an Angora? Here you go. Because I've seen what happens when these rabbits end up in not good circumstances. But now I'm getting into my next question, which is why are Angora rabbits so expensive? An English Angora can easily run between $150 and $200. A French Angora more likely between 100 and 150 and a german angora commonly goes for 250 to upwards of 350 to 400 dollars which is just a lot of money so why why do these rabbits cost so much and that is a very good question the number one answer that i want to bring out is the fertility rates of Angoras. Um, statistically, they have a much lower fertility rate. I have found that to be somewhat true. Depending on the time of year, it can be very difficult to breed them. They certainly don't breed like rabbits, um, as the adage goes. So it takes a lot of work um, to get a successful litter, let alone to raise that whole successful litter. Um, potential earnings from fiber and from breeding also keep the prices really high. This isn't a rabbit that you can go and pick up at a pet store, at least not a well-bred one, because a reputable breeder would not even think about marketing to a pet store. So there you go. You, ha you have a lot of work marketing each individual kit, and that does factor into the final price as well as all of the handling, extra grooming. We're talking hours of extra grooming per kit you raise and sell. You're investigating the trash can now. <laughs> um, so that's, that's another reason. It's also as a protection against neglect. <laughs> Are you taking that? Are you taking that for me? Um, because Angora rabbits can end up in irresponsible homes very easily by someone that maybe wants just a pet for their little kid and that little kid is nowhere near responsible enough to understand the consequences of letting that rabbit mat in hard to reach areas that they just don't feel like grooming. Um, 
So the higher price attracts a more serious buyer and it's, it's a protection to the rabbit. Um, just like you see people hesitating to give away dogs because they don't want them to at, end up in a bad place. It's kind of the same principle with a lot of other reasons combined, clearly. Um, the other factor and the last one I wanted to bring out was the higher feed cost. Because they require such a high protein level and Angora people, they're going to be looking at the parents of your rabbit in full coat. They want to know wool weights, um, the weight of the babies. Clearly, they want to see if the baby's growing a lot of wool. So they eat a lot more food accomplishing that goal. And the food in general is a lot more expensive. So while your average rabbit may only cost a few dollars a month to keep, with Angoras, you're talking a significant investment. Um, if you just have one as a pet and it's your cherished Angora and you are a responsible pet owner, you're willing to put the hours into grooming and you have that over $10 a month to spend on it, then you're the kind of buyer that an Angora breeder is proud to sell to and you most likely won't snicker at a $100 price tag for a rabbit like this. It takes generations and generations of selective breeding. Um, it takes a lot, a lot more than I can even think of to go into um, to get to the final goal of a really healthy and successful litter again. It's a ton of work. So don't get into it thinking it's an easy cash crop, but can you make money? Yes, you can if you are very dedicated. Are Angora rabbits good pets? Hopefully, by now, you, you can kind of see for yourself. Um, are they right for you? I don't know. Are they? They're cute. They're wonderful. They're gentle. Um, you can make money with them or at least pay for their own feed. Clearly, they're hilarious and very therapeutic. And there's a lot of creative opportunities with their wool that they offer to you. If I missed anything, please leave it in the comment section down below. And now I'm going to just cut to a few scenes introducing a few of these babies. Bye, guys.